my one woman play a dark skin woman's revenge i'm bringing y'all the live and in-person pay-per-view live stream performance of a dark skin woman's revenge that's right anyone anywhere in the world can watch a dark skin woman's revenge the play right from the comfort of your own home get your tickets now the link to the tickets are right below in the description box of this video. Now, for my people in Atlanta, the live stream will be filmed in Atlanta, Georgia. So for those of you that are in the Atlanta area, you can catch the show live. The live show will be at Playback Sounds located at 675 Metropolitan Parkway, Suite C12. Now, you can pay at the door, but there is limited seating. So get your tickets now. The ticketing below in the description box is also there for the people in Atlanta. Bonus! Yep, I got a bonus for y'all. On Friday, November 16th, come out and meet me, the originator of the entire dark skin lane, the first platform in history for dark skin, aka dark skin activism. Come meet the dark skin activists at the ancient African History Museum. Now, it's only right that the dark skin activist gives y'all the history of how I created the dark skin lane at the ancient African history museum. This is a package deal. You get to tour the museum and then listen to a darkism talk hosted by me, the creator of dark skin activism and the author of the most books on dark skin than anyone in the world. You will learn how and why I invented dark skin activism. You will learn about dark skin activism's impact on social media and popular culture, opening the doors for all others to openly speak on dark skin. You will learn who and what inspired me to create dark skin activism. You will also learn about all of my dark skin books, plays, and so much more. Ages 14 and up, limited seating, tour hours 5 p.m. to 6 p.m., the darkism talk 7 p.m. to 9 p.m., the location is the Ancient African History Museum, 675 Parkway, Metropolitan Parkway. Let me get that right. Metropolitan Parkway. Sweet 
3118-B. Get your tickets online at ancientafricanhistorymuseum.com. I would like to thank all of my sponsors, all of my supporters, and everybody for helping me make this happen. Subscribe, share, and like this video, and I will see you on November 17th. Okay, what's up, y'all? Good morning. Y'all know who it is. It's the world's first and only dark skin activist, Rashida Strober, the undisputed queen of dark skin. Rashida Strober, your favorite dark skin chick. And I have to come on here and talk to you guys about Serena Williams. Serena Williams is the it token dark girl of tennis. Do you want to learn to draw Hold and create second, amazing guys. artwork that will wow everyone around you? I forgot after I do my introduction, you know how um after I do my introduction. I forgot after I do my introduction, you know how there we go. After I do my introduction, sometimes the video will lead into another video. So that's pretty much what happened there with the video leading into another video. But anyway, y'all, good morning. Um, so yes, a lot of you know that I am writing a book called Token Dark Girl, the It Dark Girl of the Moment. And I also want to um, start the live broadcast here on Facebook. I'm going live on Facebook as well. So that way I can kind of, you know, kill two birds in, in one stone. So good morning, Facebook. Good morning, everybody out there. Um... A lot of you are aware and some of you may not be aware, but I am the world's first dark skin activist, the creator, the inventor, the architect of the first platform in history for dark skin. Um, I created dark skin activism in 1998. And I created dark skin activism out of my own life experiences. And it has grown to include, of course, the experiences of other people who are dark skin so it, it it articulates a world view in regards to darkism in regards to the way that you know people with dark skin are treated and it's differently than non-dark skin people so my newest book and, and let me just be real clear here as a part of dark skin activism one of the things that I've done is I've written more books on dark skin than anyone in the world. I've been doing this work since 1998. And my newest book that I'm currently editing right now is called Token Dark Girl, the It Dark Girl of the Moment. Once again, it's called Token Dark Girl, the It Dark Girl of the Moment. Good morning, Jonas. Good morning to everybody on Facebook and everybody on YouTube that's watching me. I appreciate that. Um, so yes, and I'm editing the book and in the book, I talk about dark skinned women in popular culture and the impact of what I believe to be uh, dark girl tokenism, hence the title of the book, uh, Token Dark Girl, the It Dark Girl of the Moment. So that's what, you know, the book covers. It covers, it's the first type of analysis. You know, people ignored dark skinned women, the experiences, the specific experiences of not just dark skinned women, but of dark skinned people in general. And that's why I focus in on it. I hone in on it. And so in the book, Token Dark Girl, which is my newest release, and it'll probably be done. I'm praying to God I'll have it done by this week. It's a lot of edits that's going on. But anyway, I'm analyzing uh, Token Dark Girls in various industries. And I had already finished writing in the book in regards to all the women that I wanted to put in the book. And with Serena Williams in the recent, the recent, um, issues that's been going on around Serena Williams. Um, I was doing some edits to today and also last night. And I say edits today because I woke up like super early this morning around five o'clock. And then I just started thinking about Serena Williams and the situation that's going on with, good morning, Frank. <laughs> I started thinking about Serena Williams and her current situation. And I also did a live on Serena Williams and Naomi Osaka and how black men, some, not all, I'm not here generalizing, 
how some black men are pretty much using the excuse and it's it, it really is an excuse people the excuse that she lost which she lost fair and square which is not the issue but they're taking that as an excuse to attack her and to place a non dark skinned non black woman and we can argue the point about Naomi Osaka being black or not Kerwin, you saying the live on YouTube is not working? Uh-oh. I don't know what's going on. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I don't know what's going on with that. Hmm. That's very interesting. I'm glad you told me that because I'm I'm sitting up here talking to y'all on. Hmm, that's weird. You sure it's not working? Because I see somebody on there. I see somebody on, um, I see people on the on the live on YouTube, Kerwin. So are you sure it's not working? Hmm. I don't know what's going on. I'm not sure what, what, the, what the deal is with that. Because I actually see, uh, let's see. Daryl Phil, I feel, can you hear me loud and clear? If you could type something in the um, chat box and let me know that you hear me loud and clear and that you can see me, I would really appreciate that. Because there's some people that are on Facebook that are saying that the live on YouTube is not working. So anybody that's in the chat box or anybody that's watching me on YouTube, if you could please type in the chat box that you can hear me loud and clear. Oh, I'm, I'm not sure what's going on. Kerwin then. I'm not sure. Well, what I'll do is I'll keep broadcasting on both YouTube and on Facebook. But so getting back to Serena Williams, you know, on, on Sunday, I saw several comments from black men regarding Serena Williams. And basically they were praising the fact that she lost to uh, Naomi Osaka. And again, that loss to me is not the issue. But in my mind, I saw that as an excuse to begin attacking her on her looks, okay? Um, you know, on her phenotype. And I saw that as taking the opportunity to place a non-dark-skinned woman above a dark-skinned woman, which is a huge problem within the darkism paradigm. You know, so then in looking at that, I realized that Serena Williams and Venus Williams, because Venus Williams, for whatever reason, she doesn't get as much flack as Serena does. She's not in the news like Serena is, even though they both have, you know, been in relationships with non-black men. So I can't tell y'all why. If anybody got any commentary on that as to why you think it is that Venus Williams does not get, you know, as heavily critiqued as Serena Williams, I would be glad to, to understand that. But the point that I'm making is this token dark girl status. And y'all make sure y'all get my book. It's coming out. Again, I'm editing the book. It's called Token Dark Girl, The It Dark Girl of the Moment. Serena Williams and Venus Williams, even though she doesn't get as much black, they are the quintessential token dark girls of tennis. See, token dark girls, and once you guys read my book, you will begin to understand exactly where I'm coming from. Token dark girls can be hmm, he's saying the screen is black i don't understand <laughs> i'm reading your comments there and it's saying that the screen is black i'm not sure what is going on um hold on one second so to my people in on the youtube chat can you tell me if the screen is black to you do you see that the screen is black because what i might have to do i might have to come back onto youtube and i might have to um do another live on youtube since um i guess there's some technical issues there but but you know serena williams is the quintessential token dark girl of the tennis industry because with dark girl tokenism it's a situation where only a very select few are allowed to be in any one industry at a time and it's usually it's not it's never a lot and we all know this and while I believe 
it's a good thing. I'm not saying that dark girl tokenism is, is all bad. It's not all bad. But we also have to look at the contradictions in regards to dark girl tokenism. And I believe that Serena Williams and Venus Williams, in particular, Serena Williams exemplifies the, the dark girl token status within the tennis industry. Because again, I'll tell the story. I tell y'all, I've been the dark skin activist since 1998. Okay. I tell you that to set the context for what I'm what I'm about to say. I saw the rise of the Williams sisters. I saw it. This was around 99, 2000, etc. You know what I'm saying? And so I was there to witness black people, yes, black people go in on Venus and Serena Williams for how they looked. It had nothing to do with, oh my God, they're great tennis players. Oh my God, they're so talented. Oh my God, I'm so excited and ecstatic that, you know, black women are in, getting in the tennis game and they just doing great. I mean, it was some of that, but honestly, what I saw more of was the attacks on how they look, people. This is very important to understand. And the contradiction, the paradox, because that's what it is, lies in the fact of their token dark girl status in the tennis industry. So on the one hand, the token dark girl status afforded doors to be open and afforded you know, other black women and dark skinned women to be inspired by the fact that two black women are breaking into a white dominated industry. But the con side of that is they're now in the public eye and black people just went in on them. They weren't pretty enough. Their hair didn't look good enough. No. And therein lies the contradiction of token dark girl status. See, you know, it, it's not enough to reach token dark girl status. It's, that's never enough. And again, Serena Williams, all these years later, you know, they, they I believe they came into the tennis industry into prominence uh, the late um, 90s, early 2000s. And here we have years later, even after they did some of the things to make themselves what I believe, and this is my own personal opinion, because I'm not, I'm not in their head, but even though they did some of the things that they may have felt that may have made them more physically appealing they're still getting attacked now take the the fact that serena williams she has a white husband take that out and i've said this many times and i'm gonna say it again i would personally have preferred that she got with a black king okay i will say that but i have a hard time joining in and i'm not gonna attack her because i understand the history of the attacks that she suffered as a black, dark skinned, natural haired young lady coming into the industry. And my argument in regards to Serena Williams is that the, the one of the reasons why she married a non-black man could have possibly had a lot to do with the way that she was attacked for years relentlessly by her own people. Now, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that it was just black people only that was attacking her because I have read, you know, stories about non-black men attacking her with the same types of uh, um, attacks manly. Manly always gets thrown around. Serena Williams is manly. Serena Williams, that's always the, the go-to attack. You understand what I'm saying? That's always the go-to go to attack. And that's what I believe has happened with Serena Williams. And so what I'm trying to get across to you all is that Serena Williams' dark girl token status in regards to the tennis world has had dire consequences for her. On the one hand, we're proud. We're very proud, again, that a black woman has broken into a a predominantly white dominated industry. But on the other hand, she's not pretty enough. She looks manly. We find all of these reasons to attack her. Oh, and by the way, now 
she married a non-black man because for whatever reason black men y'all feel black men weren't good enough so that's the thing that's the paradox of dark girl tokenism people it's there's pros and cons it's almost like you're fighting a losing battle in a lot of ways when you are a black particularly a dark-skinned black woman you can never please or be good enough i remember denzel washington and i have to throw this out again because it's so relevant to this particular situation and it's so relevant in regards to dark girl token status whether it be it could be in any industry and again my book token dark girl the it dark girl of the moment is going to go into detail giving you guys a detailed analysis on what dark girl tokenism is and how it impacts and i believe the impact is more negative than positive i know some of you are going to say oh well rashida it's good to have black women in a certain industry dark skinned women in a certain industry and become a role model to other dark skin you're right i would not argue against that but there are other issues that go along with a dark skinned woman becoming the token dark girl and that has a dire impact on the masses of dark girls. And so we have to, I'm looking at things in what they call in the academic world in the aggregate. And, and that's the thing, when you look at the aggregate and you compare uh, token dark girls there is no what I call in the book. I'm giving. I want to give everything away. Yeah, but y'all gotta get the book because it's analyzing the impact of uh, dark girls' token status, particularly uh, dark girls that are tokens in the entertainment industry, particularly because the entertainment industry is where everybody looks to and take directives for our ways of being, whether we want to admit it or not. You know, I talk about Lauren Hill as a token dark girl and she definitely had an impact a worldwide impact on dark skinned women all around the world and a lot of uh dark skinned women emulated her whether they want to admit it or not i'm paying homage i'm one of those ones that's going to be honest because i love giving people credit what they do i don't care if you're black white purple green it doesn't matter to me if you're a talented person and you got it i'm gonna give it up to you and one thing about lauren hill you know um a lot of uh people a lot of black women and dark skinned women were impacted by her so i break down in token dark girl the it dark girl of the moment which is my new book and y'all i'm editing it today i actually took a break from the edits to come on here and talk about serena williams being the token uh, dark girl of the tennis world just because of all the things that are going on with her in the news it's like serena williams just cannot win for anything let me check my people on on youtube okay wait a minute um people are saying that they can see me on youtube oh my god i don't know what's going on current but i'm gonna go ahead and leave the live stream up once i am done uh talking today but yeah you know serena williams has been taking a lot of flat a whole lot of flat um for the past couple of days she's been all over the the media you know, um, because of her law. And it's, it's like they're highlighting, not just in the news, but it's also her own people on social media. They are highlighting the fact that she lost and honing in on it. And they're not just leaving it at that. They're attacking her, calling her ugly, calling her manly. How is that not darkism? And how is that not that type of uh, dark girl tokenism that other dark skinned women, young women, older women, middle aged women, it doesn't matter, are seeing these attacks and becoming impacted by it. I'm, in, I'm a dark skinned woman and I'm impacted by it because what I've, I've said this when I was doing my darkism talks years ago. Um, I remember starting out in St. Petersburg at the library and I would come and I would talk about you know dark skin and give lectures community lectures about dark skin and one of the things that i need to go pull up one of my old uh a dark skin woman's revenge books that i had the, the original version of it i used to read from and one of the things that i talked about 
and I, it, this holds true to this day. It doesn't matter when you are a dark skinned woman, it doesn't matter how rich you are, how much fame you have, you still are going to be held to a different standard. You're always going getting back to Denzel Washington, what he said about his daughter wanting to be in the entertainment industry. Well, he talked about she is going to have to be 10 times better. She got to be a triple threat. She's dark skin. She can't just come up in there mediocre or with one skill set. She got to come in there with multiple skills in order to compete. And then when you do make it to what I call token dark girl status, as with Serena Williams and the other token dark girls that I talk about in my book, Token Dark Girl, the It Dark Girl of the Moment, when you do make it to that It Dark Girl status, it's still not enough people and let's be honest let's be honest about darkism let's tell the truth about darkism let's not uh sugarcoat the impact of darkism and i appreciate what you're saying Dara phil i feel you said i love the williams sisters for their dark skin and the braids in their hair and you know what unfortunately and i'm i think i'm glad you're saying that because i do appreciate that not all black men are attacking her. I uh, I completely recognize that, and I completely appreciate that. But and there are, there's always a but. We know that there is a large body of our men, and not just our men, because I've actually seen some women go in on Serena and saying that they're happy that she lost. She got what she deserved. You know, because she, you know, married a non-black man, so they're celebrating it. You know, but I draw the line when you begin attacking her looks, and that is what I saw a lot of. I saw people attacking her looks again. Manly, the man, the manly thing. Just it's like when you really want to try to break a a, a dark-skinned woman's down. And I know that with me. I may be, I may be project, projecting, but what I will say, I know with me, I'm going to talk about myself. If someone calls me manly as a dark skinned black woman, to me, that says you are really trying your best to break me down. You're really trying your best to attack my femininity as a woman, because no woman, most women do not want to have their feminine female feminine qualities attacked beauty dr margaret hunter talks about beauty as social capital our beauty is our social capital our beauty is our strength and yes education is very important I, you know i always let y'all know i have a master's degree and i do not say that i want to be very clear i do not tell people oh i have a master's degree in political science and an undergraduate degree in history so i can impress you I'm telling you that to for context, okay? To let you know that I have always felt in my heart and I know it's not in my head that none of it's ever good enough. And it is the same thing that is going on with Serena Williams. It's not good enough for Serena Williams to have consistently been the top female in the game. It, it, it's not enough. The minute she messes up the darkism attackers come out and that's why i'm saying there are pros and cons to being the it dark girl of the moment hence the title of my book i want everybody to look out for my book it's called token dark girl the it dark girl of the moment greetings law smith greetings greetings to everybody that's watching so yes the um the token the token dark girls the it dark girl of the moment I am currently working on it right now. I'm working on the edits today. I woke up around five o'clock this morning working on it. And then when I got to the portion of, I talk about in my book, uh, this concept of nihilism and this concept of uh, objectivism by um, a, a woman named Ayn Rand. And shout out to uh, Troy Terrain Star of the Star Report. I love giving people credit where it's due. That's one thing about me. I'll never like not give a person credit where it's due. Um, he is the one I've been on star show more times than I can count now. He is the one that um, made me aware of her because I read his book called objective hate and he got the title. Uh, he was inspired to get the title from Ayn Rand's uh, objectivism. 
And uh, in the book, I was talking about the, the objectivism, the concept, the philosophy of objectivism, uh, coupled with the concept of nihilism and how those things impact dark skinned women. And as I was writing about that, and or I actually, I already wrote the piece. I was just editing it. Then Serena Williams, and I said, oh, hmm, I'm not going to do a chapter on a whole chapter on Serena Williams because I already selected the token dark girls that I wanted to put in the book and it's done. I was just doing the editing, but I had to uh, add some type of analysis to the discourse because the fact is, is that, hey, Jonas, you back. Shout out to Frank. The fact is that Serena Williams, um, she is the it token dark girl of the tennis world and she has dealt with both the pros and cons and she serves as the perfect example and so you know my argument is against dark girl token status even though a lot of us we want that spot we want that spot you know because we are living in america and we are under this ideal of individualism and uh you know which goes back to iron rand's um uh philosophy of um objectivism which that led me to start thinking, hmm, y'all know I sometimes I speak on people that have not been honest about crediting me for my work as the world's first dark skinned activist. And I think I, you know, I thought back to uh, the reason why I created dark skin activism. It wasn't just about me. <laughs> it, I knew that it would help other people, right? So, but people have not been as giving to me and saying, you know what? I was inspired by the dark skin activist Rashida Strober to speak on dark skin. And I sort of thought about that and related that back to uh, what, it, what if I would have practiced Ayn Rand's philosophy of objectivism. So, yeah. So the book, Token Dark Girl, y'all got to get this book because I'm going to tell you right now of all the books that i have written token dark girl is the one that touches my heart the most and, and I, I thought i was in love with a dark skin woman's revenge when i wrote that which i am i thought darkism was just the greatest thing since uh sliced bread which it is but token dark girl the it dark girl of the moment i mean it really hones in laser sharp on on this impact of, of tokenism that people don't even see people don't even see the tokenism uh regarding a subgroup in America. They don't see it. They see black tokenism. But again, Token Dark Girl, my new book, Token Dark Girl, The It Dark Girl of the Moment, addresses how tokenism impacts specifically dark girls. So, yes. So, real quick, you know, I want to remind everybody um, about what I'm going to be doing on November 17th. Um, it's going to be filmed in Atlanta. A Dark Skinned Woman's Revenge is my play that I have been producing and performing for years, actually since 2006 on the Dark Skin Activist Tour. So I finally brought it to you guys. It's gonna be online. You can watch it online, pay-per-view live stream. That means anybody anywhere in the world can watch A Dark Skin Woman's Revenge. And I'm gonna be filming it in Atlanta at Playback Sound Studio um, at 675 Metropolitan Parkway South Southwest, and that's in Atlanta, Georgia, Suite C12. And again, that's on November 17th at 7 p.m. sharp. Now, that same filming is going to be broadcast live stream pay per view. And what I have done is I have put all of the ticketing information is all in the description of this uh, YouTube video and of this Facebook Live. All you have to do is go there. You'll see option one where you can click the link. And you can go directly to the ticketing page and purchase your live stream ticket. If you live in the Atlanta area, there's a separate link that's also in the description where you can go ahead and purchase your ticket through Eventbrite and uh, for a dark skin woman's revenge in the in, to come out to the live actual filming of the play. Now, also as a bonus on November 16th, which is Friday, which is the day before the play. I'm going to be at the Ancient African History Museum that's also located at 675 Metropolitan Parkway Southwest, but the suite is different. It's suite 3118-B. So on Friday, I'm going to be doing a darkism talk, and I'm going to be discussing all of my dark skin books, including Token Dark Girl, the It Dark Girl of the Moment that I'm going to have released by then 
also a dark skinned woman's revenge um darkism 25 ways dark skinned people um are discriminated against oh last smith you gonna be in atlanta that's great i hope you're able to come out and again even if you are not in atlanta you can watch the pay-per-view live stream of the play so you can still do that but um if you are physically in atlanta i'm going to be doing the book talk at the ancient african history museum and it's quite an honor to be doing the book talk the darkism book talk at the ancient african history museum because dark skin activism is historical it's a new uh paradigm it's a new movement that's never been done before people have talked about dark skin in the past but no one's ever honed in laser sharp with a specific intentional methodical focus on only dark skin until i created it in 1998 and then brought it to social media um in 2009 and i continue to build and expand it so i'm going to be giving the history I mean, you know talking about you guys can come out and ask me anything you want questions all of that it's going to be a fantastic time you're going to also be able to get a tour of the museum so it's a package deal all of the ticketing information once again is in the description box just check the description box and you're going to see everything you need to see there about the ticketing where you can get those tickets whether you are watching me online where you can get those tickets whether you come in and watch it in person you know all the stuff is there i have done my best to make sure that everybody get access to it and what i'm going to ask people to do as well is to please support by sharing this video um if you are on youtube whether you're on facebook make sure you share um i what i'm, I'm gonna have to see that because hold on one second um again so yeah, I'm gonna be giving you guys the complete history of how I invented the science of dark skin activism, which is again, the very first platform in history for dark skin. It was never done before me. And I'm not saying this stuff to impress people. I'm saying this stuff to impress upon you the true legacy, the true history of it and what it means and why I continue to do the work of dark skin activism, because these are real issues that are really impact, that has impacted me and nearly destroyed my life and self-esteem as a dark skinned woman. That's why I created it. And then, you know, um, that's why it's expanding now. So I'm gonna be given the history of how this entire, how I created the entire dark skin lane. And once again, I want you guys to know that all this information is in the description box. I want everybody to, because sometimes people get confused. Uh -uh. I laid it out for everybody. Uh, November 17th is the actual date of the live stream performance whether it be in Atlanta or whether you watch it, watch it online, November 17th, which is a Saturday and it's at 7 PM sharp. And y'all, I start on time. I start on time. Um, La, uh, La Smith, I am not a nonprofit. I've never been a nonprofit. I'm not opposed to being a nonprofit, but I've never been um, a nonprofit. It's just, uh, I was blessed to have the opportunity. I have a, a, a supporter and fan that's um, been supporting me in Atlanta since about 2015, 2014. And we linked up and she, you know, um, gave me the information and I decided to go ahead and follow through with the booking uh, for the play and also for the darkism talk at the museum. So, you know, it's it's not a nonprofit at all. This is what this is what I've been doing for years so that people know I have been since 19, 1998. I have been the world's first dark skin activist, created it at St. Petersburg College and just continue to develop it. And then when social media came along in 2009, I brought dark skin activism on the internet. And then from there, it just continued to develop and to develop and to develop. And it has always consisted of a live performances of a dark skin woman's revenge, which is the play a dark skin woman's revenge. And then there's also the book version of dark skin woman's revenge. So I'm gonna be giving y'all that full history at the ancient African history museum on Friday, November 16th. Um, and that's that the doors to the museum is going to open up at 5 p.m. I'm going to begin the darkism talk at 7 p.m. sharp. So make sure y'all come out if you are in the Atlanta area. Uh, and once again, the day after, I'm going to follow up with the actual live production of A Dark Skin Woman's Revenge. And like I said, you'll be able to watch it from anywhere in the world. Um, I don't care where you are, be in Africa, Europe, any part of the United States, the Caribbean. All you have to do is purchase the ticket and all the information is right there in the description box. 
and you're good to go. And again, if you're in Atlanta, you want to come out and meet me. And because I always do darkism talks after I perform, always, always. That's the, like that's like a part of the legacy of dark skin activism is for me to come out and do the play and then do a talk because it's so much, so many themes in the play that I find that people want to really sit down with me and really talk. And so that is what I do. So make sure y'all come out. Once again, make sure you share this video. I need you to share, 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 share. Um, that helps to spread dark skin activism. Ah, oh, thank you, Jonas. <laughs> I appreciate that. I appreciate all of my supporters because, you know, this getting back to Serena, this thing with Serena Williams really bothers me a lot because it, it, it's heavily charged, racially charged. Because again, people, oh, there go my washing machine, y'all. I was up there washing clothes, but I had to come. I washed clothes and editing my book, Talking Dark Girl, the It Dark Girl moment. So sorry about the washing machine going off upstairs. But anyway, it really bothered me just to see people turn on her. And you know, I understand the frustrations that some black men feel i get it i get it i'm a i'm a supporter of black men anybody that knows me knows that i have always been a hardcore supporter of black men working in my community you understand what i'm saying working in my in, in my community to help black men who have been wrongfully convicted y'all y'all need to in my book token dark girl the if dark girl of the moment i also put the resume of the dark skin activist because i feel that it's very important for people to understand going going again back to the history it's not just something for me to sit here and talk about because it feels good to talk about it's something that actually impacts the everyday lives of black people you know what i'm saying um i really hope that y'all are able to see me here i don't know why y'all wouldn't be able to see me on youtube that's kind of strange but anyway um this is real to me. It's, it, it impacts people's lives. It impacts people's uh, um, very livelihood. You know what I'm saying? People's economic situations. And it needs to be talked out, talked about. It needs to be talked about. And that's why I continue to do the work of dark skin activism as the world's first and only dark skin activist. So yes, I um, I want to thank you guys for taking the time to watch me talk about uh, Serena Williams being a being the token dark girl of the tennis world, and I want to make sure that you guys know that you need to get the book Token Dark Girl that I am completing this week. The it, the token dark girl, the it dark girl of the moment. Um, Y'all gotta forgive me because I've been I woke up early, I went to bed late because I've been editing like crazy, like I've been in editing mode because I gotta get token dark girl the it dark girl of the moment done i am so proud of the work um within token dark girl because again it's something that has not been done before and it needed to be done it needed to um uh, dark skin women in popular culture needed to be analyzed from the dark skin activist perspective so i'm very excited about that so yes um uh real quickly i know some of you are if you can if you can I don't know. Some of y'all can. Um, you're welcome. Some of y'all can watch me on. You can hop over to YouTube and watch on YouTube if you want. I am. I'm not sure. I might have to come back on here and do another live specifically for my people on YouTube because people are saying they're having issues and I don't. I'm not sure I understand why. But for those of you that are, if you can see me on YouTube, here's what I'm going to do right here. I'm going to go ahead and show you how you could go ahead and get your tickets. Okay, so I'm going to scroll down. Um, now, right underneath the video in the description box, this is what I mean right here. You see the information right here for the tickets. So the live stream pay-per-view online is option one. You just click the link and it'll take you. Look, let's do it. We click the link and it takes you directly to the page. And you can go ahead and you can purchase your tickets right there at that link and then if you are in the that's for people that live anywhere in the world now option two is for people that live in atlanta if you go and click that link right there that's eventbrite and you can go ahead and purchase your ticket there right and let's go back and if you are in the atlanta area and you want to uh, come out and hear the historical talk of how dark skin activism got created Here's what you do. There's some reviews there. You can go and you guys can go and read those reviews. 
But um, see if you are in be at physically in the Atlanta area on uh, November sixteenth, which is Friday, the information is right there. It tells you where I'm going to be at and how you can go and get your tickets. So yes, and then if you want to support the work that I do, um, helping with the production costs and all that kind of stuff, I'm gonna go ahead and drop the information in the uh, in the um, chat box if you're watching me on YouTube. And then I'm gonna go ahead and drop it in the description box if you are watching me on um, Facebook. So yeah, so that yeah, that's it, y'all. And I may come back on here again day, today and talk to you guys again. But I definitely think that I might have to come back on on YouTube and maybe even do this talk again because I never get tired of talking about it because it bears repeating. You never know who may need to hear hear it a second, a third, a fourth, and a fifth time to make them understand. So I want to thank you guys for watching again. It is the world's first and only dark skin activist. Make sure you comment. Make sure you share this video. Make sure you like this video. And that's it. It's Rashida Strober, the world's first and only dark skin activist, the undisputed queen of dark skin, Rashida Strober, and your favorite dark skin chick. And I am about to sign out. So I'm closing out on. Um, thank you, Ara Uke. I hope I'm saying your name right. I really hope I'm saying your name. I do not like to mess up people's names, y'all. Um, you see something. Okay, I'm gonna stop the screen sharing there. Yeah, I'm not sure what is going on. I may have to come back on to y'all on YouTube later on, and I may uh, just redo this live because I don't know. There's people that said they could not see me, and I'm not understanding why. All right, y'all. That's it. Y'all have a blessed day, and I'll talk to you guys again soon. Peace. <laughs>